All right. This is what I'm thinking when it comes to adding fractions. I can imagine, because I've been there, I can imagine working with students the appropriate level where they have studied what a fraction is, they've used manipulatives, we've done a lot of the work that you have done, except more, of course, with the kids. We're going to have to do more of that kind of work. We focused on what one whole unit is, flexibility of thought, like the previous activity where I asked you, can you see three-fifths, can you see five-thirds, etc. We've done all of that work. We've compared fractions, we've made equivalent fractions. I mean, we've done a lot of work with fractions, but let's just pretend in my mind right now, we have not yet added, subtracted, multiplied, or divided. Now, kids in this grade, this is, um, let's say this is like a fourth or fifth grade standard. And so kids certainly have done things like you've done even in this class to learn what addition means and what subtraction means, et cetera, with whole numbers or um, with whole numbers at this stage, probably. But now they're going to do it with fractions for the first time. So here's what I imagine. One day, the kids come to my math class, and I just give them a problem. I don't tell them how to do it. I let them figure it out. Now, remember, they've had lots of exposure to fractions. They've built visual models. They've used manipulatives, all the things that we've been talking about in this class. But on this particular day, let's just pretend for a minute, Students in my math class have never actually added fractions together. Okay, so there's prerequisite knowledge about what addition means, and there's prerequisite knowledge about what a fraction is and all the work that we've done with fractions. And then kids come in and they get this problem. I say, hey, William ate a fourth of a pizza for dinner. The next morning he ate a piece that was one-eighth of the pizza. How much pizza overall did this person eat? Go. <laughs> That's what I imagine. And I let the kids work. I let the kids think. And maybe they pull in some manipulatives. Hey, see that? It's got manipulatives. And because it's pizza, maybe they choose the appropriate tool and they try to use it strategically. Because it's pizza, the appropriate tool might be um, circular pieces. So that could represent one whole pizza, couldn't it? Assuming a circular pizza, there's one whole pizza. And in my story, he ate, William ate one-fourth of the pizza, followed by one-eighth of the pizza. So now we have to use our manipulatives. So William ate that much pizza. There's one-fourth. And then uh, let's see if I can figure out, is that the one-eighth? Or is this the one-eighth? I think it's the B. Get, it, get out of there. All right. So he ate these two. Let me put them together. This is how much pizza William ate. An eighth, uh, a fourth of a piece of a pizza, followed by an eighth of a pizza. So I can imagine, because I've seen it, kids working. <laughs> All right, you get out of the way. Kids working, pulling out the manipulatives, and seeing what one fourth plus one eighth looks like. And they know that addition means to combine the two quantities. And so there it is. That's what they've got staring at them right now is one-fourth and one-eighth is together what William ate. Gosh, how much of the pizza did he eat? Now, you saw back in a couple modules ago that with kids who don't quite understand what fractions are, their brains sometimes go to just whole number operations. That is, sometimes kids see one-fourth plus one-eighth and they don't really understand and so their brains just go with what they do understand and they just add. 1 plus 1 is 2, 4 plus 8 is 12, 2 12s, and maybe they'll get that down to a 1 6, maybe not, but that might be what they do. Now, what I want you to see is this. When kids understand what fractions are, and when they've built visual models for these fractions, uh, let me see if I can get back to my, there it is. Let me go back. Okay, they're not going to say 1 6. They are not going to say 1 6. Because when I take a one-fourth, and remember, a one-fourth is what you get when you take a whole pizza and cut it up into four equal parts. That's what a one-fourth looks like. And then a one-eighth is what you get when you take a whole and cut it up into eight equal parts. And when you put a one-fourth or one-eighth together, you are not going to get one-sixth. In fact, when you put those two things together, why does it keep doing that? When you put those two things together, 
we might even ask the students like what what do you think is it is it a half a pizza well i don't think we're quite getting to a half a pizza but is it a third of a pizza ooh that looks more reasonable doesn't it like about a, around a third of a pizza something like that we're building some number sense we're building some understanding here as they think about this but still it's a challenge they don't they don't really know what this is but here's what they do know they've done the previous work and they know about equivalent fractions and they might say well look if i take this one fourth and i make it equivalent to two eighths uh-huh one fourth oh god one fourth and two eighths are equivalent and so now i'm not telling them anything i'm not coaching them out okay i might be coaching i might be asking questions but i'm not telling them how to do it i'm waiting for a student or some students in the class to go look at this one eighth plus uh, two eighths is now three. It's three eighths. It's right there. It's three eighths. That is so crystal clear for them to see. But I'm going to let some productive struggle to happen. I'm going to let kids work together. I'm going to have them share around the room. And at some point when I get the feeling, and this is just the art of teaching, you get a feeling we're in the room. It's it's time. I say, hey, class, come over here. This group of students has a very good idea. Hey, group of students, tell us what you're thinking. And the group of students says, well, here's the fourth of a pizza. Here's the eighth of a pizza. And we didn't really know how much it was. Like maybe it's around a third. We don't, we don't really know. But when we took that fourth and made it two eighths, then the result just became crystal clear. It was three eighths. I'm like, oh, well, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Students start talking. We start orchestrating some discourse around the room about what they've been thinking. And I might even just pause and go, well, that's really fascinating. Go back to work. You all go back and, and think about that for a minute and see if you can come up with a way to represent this. A way to represent this. And so they go back to their work. And now let's let's get rid of that. That is no bueno. That is not good. So we started with one fourth and we added one eighth. And what happened was this group of students said, man, that one fourth is the same as two eighths. Now, remember what a fraction means. Two eighths means two copies of one eighth. One eighth means one copy of one eighth. And if you have two copies of one eighth, two of those blue pieces, and one of those blue pieces, and you put them together, you now have three copies of one eighth. You now have three eighths. And no kid thinks that I should add eight and eight. They just don't think that. In my experience, kids don't even, it just doesn't even come into their brain that they should add eight and eight because they're thinking two one eighths and they're thinking about those two blue fraction pieces plus one one eighth has three one eighths and they could see it they could see three one eighths and we just keep building on that building on that building on that now you wouldn't have to use the circles you could certainly come on you could certainly use fraction bars and so uh let's see three fourths uh, three four. Wait, wait. What am I saying? He ate one fourth of a pizza. There we go. We could we could put together one fourth and let's see one two three four. Uh, one two three four five six seven. No nope. one two. Ah, oh, these don't even have eights, do they? That's weird. They don't even have eights. Well, my point was this. I'm going to go find some never other manipulatives, but we could use rectangular manipulatives as well. Um, the fraction ones here work pretty well. So, and that is the beauty of it. So, I'm going to pause here, but we're going to do some more work on thinking about how over time and experience and sharing and thinking, kids figure out that when you add fractions, having a common denominator sure seems like a good idea. Here, i gotta, I got to say this. In the research literature, they talk about intellectual need. And when kids have an intellectual need, then they're more likely to think that way. So when you were staring at that one fourth and one eighth, you're like, ah, oh, I don't know how much that is. That's really hard to think about. But when you um, took the one fourth and made it two eighths, 
And now all the all the pieces are the same color blue. And then two eighths and one eighth is three eighths. There was a need, and then the common denominator idea emerges. Now, as a teacher, I might need to formalize the thinking and help students to formalize the thinking like this. But that's where we're going with addition of fractions.